Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. Very intensely weird news, but this is of course the cryptocurrency space and without further ado, let's jump right into it. Amid the tumultuous price action in the last few hours, Bitcoin's price spiked to 100,000 US dollars on the BTC USD 0925 quarterly futures contract on Binance. The last 24 hours have been nothing but volatile when it comes to the entire cryptocurrency market. Bitcoin went on a roller coaster, surging above 12,000 US dollars, dropping to 10,490, going back up and back down. In short, it's been a wild few hours. More interestingly, though, a user's algorithm went ballistic, according to Chang Peng Tao, seemingly sending the price of Bitcoin to the US dollars contract price on Binance to 100,000 US dollars. To an outsider, yeah, definitely, if you are new here, the last few hours might seem like a complete madness within the cryptocurrency markets, but for those who've been here for a long time, it's just another day this this barely even slightly phased me however an exciting thing happened on binance the contract for trading us dollar settled bitcoin quarterly futures which expires on the 25th of september saw its rate perform abnormally per a chart posted by chong peng Tao, the ceo at binance the price skyrocketed to 100,000 us dollars in a wick he said another day in crypto we do have price band protection, but a user's algo went ballistic and sent multiple orders to achieve this. We will likely have to adjust this chart a bit so it's readable in the future. Here's the actual chart right here. I tried to make it larger, but it's from it's the, embedded into this website. So when you make this image larger, you also magnify this normal website if I had gone back to it. But you can see the little crazy red line right there shortly after that. Binance issued an official response explaining that a single user placed a large number of orders and resulted in Bitcoin's price rising up to 99,964 US dollars in the stretch of a K-line chart for all quarterly future users. On top of that, roughly within the exact same uh, time frame, Bitcoin's price briefly touched a 2020 high of 12,071 US dollars in the early hours of yesterday before suffering a dramatic rejection after climbing from a low of eleven thousand two hundred and thirty dollars up over twelve thousand in the space of 24 hours bitcoin was quickly sent tumbling back to below eleven thousand after losing more than a thousand in under an hour the cryptocurrency has now recovered somewhat and is currently trading sideways between eleven thousand and eleven thousand three hundred i think we're above eleven thousand three hundred the last time that i looked with a neutral short-term trend it, it's it's crazy what happens while you're sleeping uh i was looking through articles and i was looking through the actual time that a lot of these things were published when bitcoin fell well first of all the the amount of euphoric postings that happened when bitcoin hit twelve thousand us dollars was like insane like next stop fourteen thousand we're gonna make it next top is 25 million bajillion dollars per bitcoin couple minutes later when the price slank back down these same exact websites were like is this the end of bitcoin is bitcoin over are we going to fall back to seven thousand i was like what what's what's wrong what's wrong with all these people um even this one right here says flash crash bitcoin price slides by 1.4k in minutes uh no one knows exactly what happened there's a lot of speculation going around as to the potential reasoning for this i saw a couple of places a couple of websites stating that apparently it was because Binance crashed, but I couldn't find any actual information as to if that actually happened. I think they were simply just trying to throw dirt on someone. No information as of yet. If it was Coinbase or BitMEX, it could simply be that we hit 12,000. A lot of people had sell orders around that price. The sell orders got filled. Bitcoin's price went down. And then as Bitcoin's price was going down, people were like, oh, the price is falling down. And then they started to buy again, and this is why we're currently up from where we were when the price dropped. That seems the most uh, logically obvious to me. Um, but yeah, as of now, Bitcoin's price on Binance futures touched 100,000. Uh, probably the most accurate number as to where Bitcoin's price should be, but that's just my personal feeling. And then also Bitcoin, we hit 12,000, we fell back down, but this happens all the time. Remember when we hit 10,000, we went below it. And then when we hit 10,500, we also fell back down. 
we hit 11,000. We also went back down to 10,300 and then we went to 12,000. $71 and then we fell back down as well. Uh, the uptrend for the actual market is still completely intact. Nothing has really changed. Bitcoin's fundamentals are all still there. People around the world are still using it. People around the world are still buying as much as they possibly can. Uh, so I just assumption that this has to do with the fact that we hit that number. And I'm not really sure what it is. I, I don't think I'll ever be able to constantly really figure it out why people get so scared when we hit these like complete round numbers. When we hit 12,000, everyone completely panics. Is, is it the assumption that other people are going to panic and therefore you should also panic at the exact same time and also start selling so that the price goes back down? Well, then the price goes back down. You know that it's undervalued because we hit 12,000 before and therefore you start buying again until we pass by that 12,000 because we hit the 12,000 before so therefore we can do it again and then we end up hitting 13,000 and the price falls back down and we have the same exact news all over again. This seems to be the, the, the relative trend until we get a massive amount of buy orders and then we kind of pass by these numbers and people go, well, you know, we already flew past 13,000. Next stop is 14,000. I don't know what it is. Um, yeah. It says Bitcoin has been experiencing what would be best described as one of the best times in the market after its price moved from around $10,000 to post a new price above 12000 with the new impressive movement in a matter of days, analysts have given their take on the future of the coin. According to a few of them, the Bitcoin bull run is presently giving them hope that the coin is set to touch its all-time high figures. According to a particular trader, the three crucial moving average is there to witness an uptrend, upward trend in the weekly chart. Where's the rest of the words? Uh, talking about the last time these key moving averages showed up an upward trend. The analyst noted specifically the bull run of 2012 and 13, as well as 2016. So 2016, as it stands right now, is correctly the beginning of the bull market for the 2017 uptrend. But it was more so I think people gathered it from 2017 because we went from 900 to 20,000. But apparently the uptrend in price began in 2016. But we're going to still continue calling it the 2017 bull run because that's what it's most famously known as. Going further... The analyst said that if history is going to repeat itself, then the Bitcoin bull run would span longer than a year. Once, once again, it did. 2012, 2012, 2012, 2012 to 2013, 2016 until 2017. Uh, furthermore, if the bull run happens, Bitcoin would be able to post a new all-time high record that would displace the previous one. Another factor that shows Bitcoin is about to make a massive surge in the term super trend which just showed green for the first time in about a year all of the analysts i don't have any of the charts here because there's far too many tabs already open up here a lot of them are showing their charts and they're saying that apparently we are on the right path to being able to not only pass twenty thousand us dollars per bitcoin but a lot of them depending on where you look there was one guy his chart it had like three lines it was really interesting uh the the lowest that his chart saw was that bitcoin uh, was aiming for 28,000 US dollars during this bullish uptrend. However long this thing is going to do, Bitcoin's price would hit 28,000. But he said that that one seemed less likely as it was the lower form on the chart. He said the most likely is that we are aiming for anywhere from 50 to $56,000 per Bitcoin, which puts us over that uh, magical uh, $1 trillion market cap. He also had another one that said we're, that this cycle we would go over 100,000. Question mark. I mean, no one really knows exactly how far we're going to go. A lot of people are also talking about that during this particular one that we could be hitting a quarter of a million dollars. I think it seems rather unlikely unless something really crazy happens. But even more so, if you kind of add up all the news, we probably should be hitting that within the next two years. But I doubt that's going to happen because um, I assume that the powers that be, if they got wind that Bitcoin was nearing $200,000, they would probably... Uh, tried to put a hamper on things, as it were. But um, everyone's losing their minds. Everyone is very optimistic. I'm seeing very few, if not any, articles talking about that Bitcoin is going to fall back down to six, 7,000. I assume these people really got it through their heads that these prices are just probably not going to happen again, at least not now, from all these uh, people we were hearing about before that Bitcoin had to drop to 5,000 or had to drop to 7,000. I was having a, a, a discussion with a very good friend of mine. Hello, if you are listening out there. Uh, 
and he was telling me what I've all been telling all of you. People have been coming up to me as of late asking me how to get into the cryptocurrency market, how to buy some, what all these words. Uh, he said a friend of his was asking him or talking to him about getting into the cryptocurrency market and starting to buy some Bitcoin. And the guy was like, yeah, I would love to get some, but I hope the price drops so I can accumulate a bit more. Nope, that's that's not how how the market works. Just because now, and I mean this in the nicest way, just because you or your friend was too late getting into the market does not mean that Bitcoin's price has to fall so that you can accumulate more. Because what's going to end up happening is when we do hit 50,000, when we do hit $100,000 per coin, people are going to be looking at you saying, wow, you got in at X price. I wish I also did that. I wish Bitcoin would fall below 100,000 so that I can also accumulate more. Just kind of be happy that you got in at any price. I mean, be, be, be happy that you got in before we hit half a million dollars because there are going to be tons of, not millions, if not billions of people on the planet who are not going to be buying any Bitcoin until we really dramatically surge and it'll be completely impossible for them to even buy a tenth of a Bitcoin, completely out of the realm of possibility for any of them. So uh, we, we, we had those, those things before where everyone was like, oh gosh, I hope Bitcoin falls back down to 3,000. So why would you hope for the for the decimation of Bitcoin's price and the hope that you'd be able, do you even have 3,000 to be able to buy an entire Bitcoin if it did fall down to 3,000? That if, if, if Bitcoin fell right now from 11,000 something to 3,000 so you could accumulate more, Bitcoin would probably be done because that would mean the, the entire cryptocurrency market has crashed. If Bitcoin crashes by 70%, the entire cryptocurrency altcoin market falls down by 99%. And then nobody makes any money. So just be happy that you got in at any price and that you are here right now. Especially, I mean, imagine being able to get in at 900 before it goes to 20,000. Now imagine that kind of move up once again. Be happy that you get in at 10,000 or 11,000 before 45,000. Or 87,000 or 115,000. Anyway, just some news and let's move on. Also in incredibly popular news, and please uh, have your spidey sense on. I don't know what other words to kind of say. It says a low cap DeFi cryptocurrency is the latest to shake up the cryptoverse after surging 409% in just a few days. Tendies, that is T-E-N-D-I-E-S, a new cryptocurrency that bills itself as the next generation autonomous and hyperinflationary coin is attracting attention, jumping from 18 cents to 94 cents on Sunday. According to CoinGecko, the asset now stands at 70 cents at the time of publishing. The coin is also gaining significant volume on Uniswap, uh, with its trading volume soaring to $4.5 million, surpassing stablecoin Tether and decentralized Oracle chain link, I assume, just on Uniswap. Tendies relies on a deflationary model and user loyalty to try and establish value. Its tongue-in-cheek reference or name is a reference to a meme about chicken tenders. Poloniex uh, wrote about it, and they said Poloniex is honored to list the future of fried crypto tendies. And they show photos of chicken tenders that have been fried. And this coin went up from 18 cents to 94 cents. Please be cautious when investing your money. Please know where you're putting your money. For those of you not looking at the screen right now, this one says ICO funding hit a record $800 million in quarter two. Just quarter two of 2017 of course this article is also from 2017 this one says cryptocurrency icos are making bitcoin startups richer than ever richer than venture capitalists ever did once again this article is also from 2017 when i talk about us being in that same exact hype cycle this is exactly where we are currently this is why i am uh, I'm sad that these things continue to float around, grabbing the money from people who have no business buying them. However, if you are in the right coins, the correct coins, and have your place in a very firmly strong cryptocurrency, uh, this, is, this is always a precursor, if not the beginning cursor, because I think we're basically here, of the crazy bull run. 
Uh, it's stuff like this. I wish I could find, first of all, around 99.5, if not more, I think it's actually more, percent of all the ICOs that happened in 2017 are now dust. They're simply not around. In 2017, you could find a multitude of cryptocurrencies that were just like this. They were based on food. They were based on dogs. There was also a cat coin. There was like a snail coin. There was a, there was a coin for basically everything, and they all performed extremely well because during a bull market, everything does well. There were many other articles, not even just about tendies, but many other coins that were also doing extremely well over the last month or so that tons of people are pushing their money into it's just a, a, a very big, please be cautious where you're putting your money. And I know a lot of this is falling on deaf ears uh, because I can feel it. Like I can feel people either rolling their eyes or simply just not paying attention to what I'm saying. And they're going to put their money into a lot of these coins. Uh, right. Um, this one also says, without even having to go through it, it says market watch altcoins on fire as bitcoin's dominance taps yearly lows does it have the actual names of a lot of these things i think this was the article that actually had it yeah it says uh, at the time of writing double digit price pumps are visible in lower cap altcoins they are terra swipe ren ocean protocol ave loop ring flexa coin Synthetics Network and Kava. Please be aware of where you're putting your money because the other cryptocurrency channels are on a roll right now. They are making sure that they pump these coins. This is a little known secret for those of you who do not know. Every day I get tons of emails on my email thing asking me to promote a coin in 2017, I was asked to promote ICOs, and I said no to every single one of them because I realized very quickly a lot of these things were scams. I'll be transparent with you as well. A lot of them were offering me a lot of money because of how many subscribers that I have. A lot of them were offering me anywhere from $1,500 to $3,000 to $5,000 per video. That is not a joke number to promote their coin, to promote their ICO, to promote their whatever thing they had going on. I had to talk about the coin for either a minute before the, the video actually began or somewhere in the middle. I used to read through these emails. And I will be honest with you, of course it's tempting. If someone's telling you I'll give you $5,000 to talk about something for a minute, I was like, mm, but I realized and the, the, all these coins are gone. None of these coins were even real in the first place. And a lot of these... A lot of people lost millions of dollars in these coins. The other cryptocurrency channels are, I don't know these people, but a lot of them are more than willing to promote these coins easily, easily, easily. If, even if someone's telling you, I'll give you 2000 to, to talk about this coin. And over the course of 10 days, you promote 10 different coins. You've made 20,000 in a month. Please watch out for where you're putting your money. Please don't believe everything that you see, read, hear about these coins skyrocketing to new all-time highs and you need to be in these coins. A lot of the other cryptocurrency channels that were not active over the last two years as prices were dropping have resurged. And these people are wearing suits and they're sitting in front of their, their automobile and they're doing all these other crazy things to make you believe that not only are they extremely rich, but that they can also make you rich. These are traps. Do not get caught in them. There are so many articles floating around talking about these coins, and they're all about different coins as well. Uh, this coin is doing very well. This coin shot up by 1,800%. Did you buy it? Question mark. I hope you did not because these coins the next day end up falling back down by 80%. Anyway, um, that's that news. And without further ado, let's move on. I guess this is also part of it as well. It says Ethereum's price trading at a one-year high, back to 500. The the overall sentiment right now between and this one also says it as well. Uh, it says Ripple price analysis uh, rally could gather pace again above 30 cents. Um, these coins have been doing. First of all, everything in the market is of course doing well as the market is 
moving upward. A lot of people, I saw a couple of articles with people discussing, writing about why Ethereum was rising in price at all as they expected the coin to, I guess maybe they don't like Ethereum or maybe they just assume that the price should not be as high as it currently is. Ethereum has an enormous amount of momentum. And this is also once again, a mimic of 2017. The ICOs were built on top of Ethereum. And now we have the DeFi coins being built on top of Ethereum. And there are brand new DeFi coins coming out all the time. For a lot of these DeFi protocols, they have to buy Ether or they're locking up Ether as they're making these coins, yada, 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 whatever the actual thing is. So logically, as more coins get built on top of Ethereum, Ethereum's price is also going to continue rising. I don't know if it has it in this article, maybe not. Uh, what we're also seeing a huge amount of is that um, a lot of people are also starting to lock up more Bitcoin inside of Ether as well to make um, WBTC, which are wrapped Bitcoin. And that trend also continues to move up as well. A lot of the DeFi projects are also locking up Bitcoin. So uh, the, the future trend for the cryptocurrency market, and I, th I think we're seeing the very beginning of this because it does work is the locking up of coins in some sort of way into a protocol or into a blockchain to increase its value so the actual value proposition may be coming from the actual usage of the coin people around the world are buying the coin are holding it not spending it but you make a coin's price rise as well when you lock it up and this is why the um energy surrounding proof of stake is very strong right now because when you have these coins and you lock them and stake them into the actual network to create new coins. Everyone else also wants to be able to stake their coins to be able to make new coins. And the more people that are staking, the lower the coin supply, the lower the coin supply. That means the less is actually flowing around on cryptocurrency exchanges. And that causes the price to move higher. And the same exact thing is happening as well for Bitcoin as people are putting Bitcoin on other blockchains and creating wrapped versions of it so that they can then transact in Bitcoin's value but on quicker blockchains. And that's definitely going to be a trend that's going to continue uh, forever and ever as far as we can uh, possibly tell. Anyway, yeah, the market's doing pretty okay. We had that drop. We've already started moving back higher. We'll see what the rest of the week, I think even the rest of this day and probably tomorrow will hold for us. If we can move back above 12,000 by Wednesday, thumbs up. It might take us a while to go a bit higher, but I think the overall sentiment right now is money, money, money. And that's where I think um, we're headed. That's just me personally, though. Also in very popular news, prominent podcaster Joe Rogan is urging his audience of 200 million people to buy Bitcoin and to start stacking sats. On the opening salvo, <coughs> sorry, of episode 1515 of the Joe Rogan Experience, Rogan promoted Bitcoin as part of a Cash App ad. Rogan touted Cash App's ability to let users to automatically purchase Bitcoin at different intervals based on their preferences, it's, he said during the actual thing. With the Cash App, you can automatically purchase Bitcoin daily, weekly, or even bi-weekly. Known in the industry as stacking sats, Sats is short for Satoshi, the legendary person who created Bitcoin. Bitcoin, what is it? Sure, is it transformative? I love it. Wish it was exchange. Get on board. Rogan's views on Bitcoin appear to be evolving. In January, Rogan expressed some of his worries about Bitcoin and crypto. He said, but at the end of the day, I just don't totally understand how you can have so many of them. Like how many cryptocurrencies are there? And if you don't have so many of them, well, who's to say when you stop when you can stop making them. Uh, okay, so this is, oh, I didn't, how do I even dissect it? Like it gave me like a mini headache. Um, his ideas are stuck back in 2012 and 2015, within that rough time frame. One of the main arguments against Bitcoin, and, and this isn't Joe Rogan's fault. I'm not blaming him for his lack of knowledge in the market. If he's just not into it, he's just not into it. Uh, a lot of people were saying, if you have so many altcoins, it, it dilutes the value of Bitcoin simply because you can make so many of them and therefore other ones are probably going to take the place of Bitcoin. But you can't, you don't value the, you don't devalue the value of a Maserati because all the way on the other side of the world, someone created 15,000 Hondas. That's not how it works. Um, the same exact thing when people were forking Bitcoin or creating other copies of Bitcoin and saying that this was the new Bitcoin this is exactly why I mentioned in 2018, as we start seeing more adoption of it, 
all the cryptocurrency institutions, the stock exchanges would only be listing Bitcoin because everything else is seen as an actual distraction. Um, but nice to see that he's on board. I'm, I'm shrugging my shoulders. I, I have a feeling he probably already was. He's, he's extremely rich, so I assume he was probably uh, buying for quite some time. Uh, but I think the news is, is that he told 200 million people to buy Bitcoin and start sacking sack and sats, stacking sats, um, which of course is going to have a huge momentum on the market because this is, this is once, uh, uh, th 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 this is just how it starts. I, I don't know how to keep saying that over and over in different ways. Anyway, very popular news that Joe Rogan told millions of people to buy Bitcoin. And without further ado, let's move on. Also in, of, of course, they like to make things confusing news. The Beijing Arbitration Commission has published an article clarifying that Bitcoin's use as a commodity has never been banned in China. It explains that the Chinese authorities' attitude towards controlling Bitcoin revolves around three areas. The Arbitration Commission published an article of the legal nature of Bitcoin in China on Thursday. The Beijing-based independent nonprofit organization Offer services in arbitration, mediation, to damage. The article was authored by economist Wang Jin, an arbitrator for the commission. He said there are still differences in the understanding of the legal nature of Bitcoin under the current regulatory system. Yada, yada, yada. Wang described the current uh, feeling towards Bitcoin's policies are mainly based on two announcements. The first was the Notice on Preventing Bitcoin Risks, which was published in 2013. The second was an uh, announcement on preventing financial risks of coin or token issuance in 2017 by seven ministries, including the PBOC. He explained that they reflect China's current attitude towards Bitcoin control, which revolves around three aspects. Uh, so I guess they felt a need to announce once again that Bitcoin was not banned within their country. I'm not, I don't know what's going on anymore because we get news one day that they don't like it or that they're going to start coming down hard on people or that they're closing offices or whatever the case might be. And then the next day they release some really crazy news about how much they like it. Like there, there, there's actually been days where like they've told and promoted people or told people how great Bitcoin is. And then the next week we get something else that they're like shutting down mining farms. And then the next day we get something that apparently Bitcoin trading is, we, 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 we know that Bitcoin as a commodity or even as an investment is allowed within China. Um, the main, the main come down on all of this is that they just don't want it to be used as a currency in general, especially within their borders. I expect other major countries to kind of do the exact same thing. Once we pass by fifty thousand dollars, that's the next, not even psychological barrier that we have to pass as a as a community. It's going to be the. Uh, remember the article that we had either last year or the end of 2018 that said once Bitcoin passes by $50,000 per coin, um, I think it'll be, no, no, it was, it was, yeah, yeah. Once we pass by the trillion, it'll have a higher GDP and stronger so-and-so than many other countries around the world. But I think once it even doubles or triples that amount, that's when we're strong enough to actually bypass the US dollar. And that's when I think we're going to have a huge, like, uh, digital war uh, because countries are probably not going to feel too happy about that. Anyway, so yeah, the news is Bitcoin still a commodity in China. Um, sure, why not? I'm I'm pretty sure people are still trading it there anyway because you know the internet and that's how the internet works. Let's move on. Um, next up, the amount of hodling or holding that is misspelled that is occurring in the Bitcoin space has increased tenfold. According to a new chart unveiled by Unchained Capital, the number of Bitcoin holders that haven't moved their digital funds over the past year has surged to an all time high. It says this makes perfect sense when one considers the economic conditions people are facing. Uh, 19 has caused major shifts in the global economies. Fiat currencies have lost much of their stamina over the past several weeks with the US dollar experiencing massive drops that have taken it to new lows. Also, don't forget um, that the US GDP dropped by 32% over the course of a three month period. And I think the UK has dropped by 41% in the same exact time as well. 
As a result, many are looking to assets like gold, Bitcoin, and others as a means of keeping their wealth hedged against economic problems, such as inflation. I, I think it's a lot more. I mean, it could be. I think there are many reasons why Bitcoin and the rest of the cryptocurrency market have been surging. I think a lot of it is just simply uncertainty. And I think more so it's people trying to figure out ways to make money as they realize that they are not making money. I think that's probably the, going to be the biggest catalyst because if it was actually people realizing the overall long-term effects of 19 on the economy, the global economy is already being garbage before all of this. Like all of this was simply a mirage as well. Like prices have been pumped for a lot of these stocks and stuff like that by governments for it, it's, it's been quite a long amount of time. If there had been any type of price movement based in logic, we'd be around $35,000 per Bitcoin just based off of the actual usage of Bitcoin. Bitcoin being the, what was the last lose we had? Eighth largest currency on the planet. And by the time we end up hitting a $25,000 Bitcoin, we should get more articles talking about that Bitcoin is the sixth or fifth largest currency on the planet as well. Like that alone, like think of how, how major this all actually is. Uh, Long story short, if we had had any type of logic, we would have had price movements from many, many moons ago. Uh, and this is what I really think is causing the actual movement. It's just simply people are trying to figure out how to make money. The cryptocurrency market seems ripe or rife. I don't know which one to use. I think it's rife. Ripe? It looks like it's poised to make a lot more money and everyone kind of wants to be in it as well. As we've been told for a while that this was going to happen and as it appears that it is now happening, uh, people are jumping into the market. But... We also had the news before that tons of people are taking off their Bitcoin off of cryptocurrency exchanges. They're probably, I mean, it could be a million things. It could be people putting it onto DeFi projects, people locking it inside of Ethereum, people locking it inside of their drawers, taking it off of their uh, crypto exchanges or putting it. And I mean, it, it, it's a whole bunch of things. A lot of my friends have also been uh, buying ledgers, putting their cryptocurrency away. As, as the value proposition of Bitcoin becomes more and more valuable, Imagine if Bitcoin hits 100,000. Imagination time. Do you want your Bitcoin to be on a cryptocurrency exchange? Probably not. You want to be able to move your coins around as you so will. And I think uh, what we're seeing is also the, the effects of major companies and corporations probably buying up these cryptocurrencies off of cryptocurrency exchanges and simply just taking it off. Because they probably realize, hey... It can be lost on that website or we may not have access to our money. So anyway, yeah, of course, this is going to continue happening. Um, I predict when Bitcoin hits around 50,000 US dollars, we're going to see probably a lot of people trying to sell around that point, similar to the 12,000. Oh, no, we, we hit this number. I must sell to, to make some money. But we're going to see a huge outflow of coins as well from cryptocurrency exchanges. And I think that would be a major trend going forward um at that point bitcoin is definitely digital gold and simply having your money on a cryptocurrency exchange is going to be a major no-no and i don't think we're ever going to see like a massive wave of of self-custody but i think we're going to we already have a huge amount of cryptocurrency companies and banks right now who are trying to custody crypto and i think that's going to happen even more to be able to you know have your money on these on these platforms to keep it safe um, so saith the, the banks. Anyway, yeah, of course more people are, are holding Bitcoin and not selling. Do you really want to get rid of your Bitcoin right now when it could potentially 5x or 10x or 20x? Probably not. But this is also happening for other coins as well. All, all the people are also gobbling up these coins in anticipation of a, a 10x or a 15x in price. Next up, just four days... After Cardano's successful launch of Shelly, there are over 600 active staking pools. According to data, well, according to data compiled by adapools.org, Cardano has currently 623 active staking pools, representing a relative peak following the launch of Shelly. The pools, which allow users to participate in the staking protocol, have a collective 2.4 billion ADA committed to staking and approving the network's decentralization. Uh, and they says somewhere around here, here we go. It says, as the number of registered stake pools increases, the Cardano blockchain will become progressively more decentralized. Once the Cardano mainnet has reached 1,000 pools, Cardano will become one of the more, or the most decentralized, scalable and secure blockchains to date. I assume we'll probably hit over 1,000 pools mid this month. 
I don't think it's going to act actually take that long for this to actually uh, take place. I think the more important thing is the amount of Shelly, amount of Shelly, the amount of Cardano that's actually staked inside the actual protocol because this will cause the actual run up in price, especially as uh, more people decide to start finding a way to make passive income through the cryptocurrency space. But I mean, is, is, is anyone surprised? I, I'm, I'm actually shocked that there are only 623 staking pools. I we can only assume that more are going to happen. The other major news that we're still waiting for is the uh, Binance news, the Poloniex news, and the Coinbase news. And not only that Coinbase is adding Cardano, but that all three of them are going to be allowing the staking of... Oh, and I guess also Kraken. I don't think Kraken has announced uh, Cardano staking. But I, I assume this is all going to happen within the next couple of weeks as well. Yeah. And to finish things off... Plan B, the well-known creator of the contested stock-to-flow model, believes that Bitcoin is now well on track to reach $100,000 as the price has risen to yearly highs. The optimistic sentiment coincides with the shift in momentum from alternative cryptocurrencies or altcoins to Bitcoin. He said, I can't make a chart for you now at sea. I guess he's on a boat. But stock to flow model perfectly on track. At the same time, the price of Bitcoin has increased by 17% in a week as it broke through a major three year trend line. As Cointelegraph reported, traders seemingly expect Bitcoin to test higher resistance levels in the near term. So, um, what I'm expecting to happen next, I'm not a psychic or a wizard, so I don't know if this is going to happen. But the next thing that took place from 2017 were two different things. First, hear me out. There was a drop in price across the cryptocurrency market. And that might have been what we just saw uh, around August time. End of summer 2017, there was like a, a lull period within the market. Everyone was kind of doing other things, uh, what have you. Um, and then after that, there was an uptick in Bitcoin's price. And the uptick in Bitcoin's price caused a drainage from the other altcoins. And that was simply because, kind of looking back at it, the same exact thing with us trying to hit 14,000 is that Bitcoin had to perform very well for the rest of the market, of the, for the rest of the market to actually do so as well. So what could possibly happen next is that, I mean, I think we've already seen the dip. Question mark, who knows? But I think Bitcoin is going to continue higher and try and break that 14,000, which is the number that we have been trying to reach for quite a while. And once we break that, I think that's when the rest of the altcoins are going to start surging. So expect over the next two, three weeks, uh, a drop in altcoin prices. I don't know. I'm just kind of going based off of the information that we've had before and just kind of assuming that everything will simply take place once again. Uh, a drainage of altcoins pushing into Bitcoin. And then when Bitcoin finally pushes past that 14,000, it looks like we're moving towards officially $20,000 Bitcoin. That's when the altcoins are going to completely lose their mind. And that's when we get the uh, balloons dropping and people talking about buying Lambos and stuff all over again. The current movement that we have or the current news that we are getting from different analysts in the cryptocurrency space is that the $100,000 price will be reached by the end of next year. According to all their charts, the stock to flow ratio, the other people who are also charting out their own things, whether it be on YouTube or many other places and blogs and vlogs, wherever you decide to find your information, they're all showing that by the either the end of this year or the beginning of next year, they've, they've all predicted anywhere from a 35,000 to a $58,000 Bitcoin. And if that momentum continues, or rather if we even hit those insane numbers, that by the end of next year, as this entire bull run is expected to last for over a year or just about a year, the Bitcoin's price will end this uh, stream, this, this upward trend, this bull market at 100,000. And at that point, we'll start having discussions once again of, you know, I, I assume Bitcoin's going to fall back down to like 28,000. And then we'll start the whole three year cycle uh, of moving back up all over again, just kind of. You know, which also kind of fits the timing as well, because at that point we'd be at the next having. So I guess it kind of does make a little bit of sense. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. They are Professor Wally from Gunbot University, 
Auspicious, Agile, and Blockchain, Navarro, Williams, David, James, Attila, the Han, Yasha, Harari, Oscar, Maldonado, Utopia, 569, Moonman, High, XRP, Joshua, Vineyard, Martin, Stoyo, Nostromo, John Sarson, The Animal Reader, A Bibliophobia, Todd Mullis, Adam, Graysick, Moher, Maroney, Master Adventures in Thailand, Jared Schneider, Wise Knight, Owl, 242 to the World, Crypto, Joe, Bankroll Network, Crypto Artist, Cold D3D, Damien Setsuna, Nick Kanaya, Richie Richard III, Landy Impaler, Paxis, Nick Mann, Jalavori, Anthony Charles, Jim Garner, Jeremy Fox, Minting Coins, Miller, Hishtat, Everyday, and Kyle Skips Leg Day. Yet, uh, nope. Yes to Crypto. <laughs> Bodie McBoatface. Almost said yes to legs. Because <laughs> it was Skips Leg Day and the yes was. Anyway, yes to Crypto. <laughs> Bodie McBoatface. Anytime Fitness, Monks Corner Staff, Arf Medic 17, Bake Me a Cake, Tigger, Macho, Nisa on Crypto with Lionel, Crayola, Michelle, URL, and Bolero Bastos. Thank you all very, very much for your support. Thank you to everyone who is a member of the channel, and thank you to everyone who is a clicker of affiliate links. At the moment, the price of Bitcoin is currently down by 1.18%. A lot of jumps in the last 24 hours. Uh, we also got articles last week talking about that we should be expecting more volatility in Bitcoin's price. I guess these are right there. Um, Ethereum's up. XRP is also up. Uh, XRP has been performing incredibly well and is actually being quite resilient based on everything that's been going on. If we can get to a 35 or 40 cent XRP before Bitcoin hits that $14,000, that would be monumental because that means we're going to be seeing a $1 XRP relatively soon. This is, of course, in the air. Because no one knows exactly where the market is going to go, even despite the drop, Cardano is also moving up in price i assume just because of all the madness like it's actually upgraded and people are staking their cardano so i assume a lot of it is also being locked up into the protocol some altcoins are in red but it's like a light red it's not like a down 25 percent um i think everyone or every coin kind of just waiting to see where bitcoin is going to go right now yeah, yeah, I mean, some of the DeFi coins, I mean, like Ampleforth is down by 21%, but, you know, uh, I do hope you all enjoyed. It's going to be a crazy week. I, I can feel it. It's just something in the air. I don't know if it's only me. I, I, I have one of my friends, I tell him this all the time. Like, I can just feel when weeks are going to be like really insane. Um, I, I hope it'll be a good insane. I can't really tell, but something is definitely in the air. I do hope you all enjoyed. I hope you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening. Please make sure you know where you're putting your money. Don't fall for these traps just because someone else is telling you to put your money, your hard-earned money, into a coin that they saw go up by 180% does not mean that you should do so as well. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening, and I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.